Hi, we're going to talk today about how you can keep your children safer online. Being a parent in the digital age is really hard. So we're going to think about some of the risks that your, our young people are facing in this digital age. We're going to introduce some strategies to help you bring your offline parenting skills online. You're doing a great job anyway. We just need some ideas of how to put that in practice to help your digital life. And we're hopefully going to give you some confidence to help, you to help your children to manage their digital lives as well. We're also going to think about some of the risks that our young children's online activities have been changed in the past year with the more rel reliance on technology during the pandemic. We all know that our children have a very strong online existence, even harder now with the online learning. We might have children who are working on their own, reading or doing their schoolwork. We know lots of parents are engaging with their young children online, supporting them, helping them, knowing what they're doing and being part of that in existence. We've got children sharing work together, collaborating. It might be on what the same device. It might be that they're actually working on different devices and collaborating online. We also have children working alone, playing games. But actually, sometimes we need to think, what are our children doing when they're on their own? Are they listening to appropriate material, engaging with appropriate games? Are they doing what you think they're doing when they're online? There are lots of worrying facts and figures thrown around nowadays. This is a report from Ofcom in 2019. Unfortunately, due to the pandemic, there wasn't a 2020 report. So these facts and figures are actually a little bit out of date. And I think we could say by knowing what our children are doing online, that probably the facts here, the figures are going to be higher. Half of 10 year olds own a mobile phone. And we're not talking about a basic phone that can just take calls and make calls. Children have smartphones. Usually they're the hand-me-downs from you as their adults. So that our children have technology in their pockets that are really quite extensive. Smart speakers, the Alexas and the Google Homes, the use of those has doubled in the past year. I bet you've got one at home and use it. But if you've got a child who is very young, perhaps can't use a mouse or a keyboard, they can actually now get information just by using their voice, a voice activated speaker. So think about that. Think about how we're opening up the online world to our very young learners. Our children have very different watching habits than we did. Nowadays, nobody sits and watches a programme at the allotted time. You can watch TV whenever you want, at whatever time you want, and even binge watch a whole series at once. We don't have to plan to watch TV. So our video habits, our watching habits for TV have changed dramatically. And actually, most of our children now, their content they're accessing is YouTube. It's their favorite and most used online resource. Really interesting, isn't it? That actually it's girls that are gaming now. We used to think that gaming was just a boy's activity, but actually now half of the girls of the 15 to five year old age ratio are gamers. Ask your children what they want to be when they grow up. They won't say a doctor, a teacher, a ballerina, a, fire, a fighter. Our children now want to be YouTubers or vloggers. And the growth in these influencers and these, these celebrities with these statuses have grown immensely. Our children know who these bloggers and vloggers and influencers are. They want to be like them. 
the glamorous world out there. So we really need to start thinking about showing our children what the true life of an influencer is and actually how that person gets to be an influencer. And actually not everyone who has a YouTube channel is going to be a, a famous YouTuber. Like not everyone who wants to be a Premier League footballer is going to reach that goal. Make sure that our children are engaged in reality. The world is changed and we know that we're living through very different times. And there was a, last year a very interesting report led by Sir Professor Robert Winston, who you probably all know from famous TV programmes, Child of Our Time and things like that, looking at the pandemic and how parenting has changed. And one of the worrying factors in this report was that actually a lot of children are reliant on devices, but they're left on their own. And actually being unsupervised gives our young children a greater risk of online harm. And we don't at the moment fully understand what the end result and the end consequences are for our children to be on their own, on devices, exploring the online world. There are seven major, we'll call them dangers here, that are seen as being part of the online world. And these are ones that we probably have all experienced or know about. This is from a um, cyber security firm called Kaspersky. And they see the seven dangers as being cyberbullying, the bullying online, using technology to, um, to bully people, saying things online that you probably would never say face to face. And remember, cyberbullying is persistent bullying that is done in a determined way. It's not a one-off argument with your friend online. It's targeted, persistent. Cyber predators, people out there are trying to get hold of information or trying to get hold of children for um, misdemeanors, so predating online. A huge danger is sharing private information, giving away our private data, our private information. It's done so easily nowadays, isn't it? Phishing, when people are phishing for information, falling for scams. They're so clever now, these scams. It looks like that emails come from HMRC or the um, H, um, some site that you know of and that you use often and it's very easy to fall into those scams you think you're replying to a genuine email it's not and one thing we've got to be really careful of is the internet never forgets we all have a digital footprint whatever we post or say or comment on it's there forever this is called a digital footprint a record of what you do online the places you visit and actually other people can influence your digital footprint. So if you've got people who involve you in posts, perhaps post a picture about you or make a comment about you, naming you, tagging you, that becomes part of your digital footprint. It's very hard to shake off a digital footprint. Let's find out some more because if your family or your friends live your life online, the chances are you will have a digital footprint. So let's find out some more about what is a digital footprint. Whenever we check out our favourite bands online, message our friends on social media or post a selfie, we leave an online trail. This is called our digital footprint. In fact, nowadays our digital footprint can begin before we even know what a computer is. Every time you give an online platform information, they increase their virtual picture of you. This means companies and other people, whether we like it or not, know a lot about us. Have you ever wondered when you're online and the adverts seem to know what you like? That's your digital footprint catching up with you. Posts, messages, pictures, everything by you or about you adds to your digital footprint. Some of these things can be kept by the companies you give them to. But hang on, you can always delete it, right? Uh, no, not always. People can always screen grab things. And deleted things can still be hanging around somewhere online. And the negatives might come back to bite you. In the future, like when you meet new people or look for jobs, it's pretty much guaranteed that someone will look you up online. And you've got to think, what will they see? 
If you live part of your life online, then your digital footprint becomes part of not only your present, but also your future. You've got to own your footprint because it's with you for life. So what are the threats for our children? You probably know about these. They're nothing that's going to shock you, but it's good to important to remind us what are the threats to our children. There's the ongoing threat of child sexual abuse, radicalisation, sexting, where children can very easily send to each other photographs that are of a nature that should not be shared online. Even if they're consenting, it still is an issue. Cyberbullying, so the bullying online. Persistent, determined. But also, accessing age-inappropriate content. In schools, we have filtered internet, so children can are fairly secure in what they see. They will not be accessing content that is not for their particular age range. But at home, that will be very different. So you might have children accessing content that's very adult or play a game where the age is not for that particular age. Children can see lots of harmful content. There's so much out there that we know that we would not want our children to see. Children can find out how to do anything online. And gaming and in the game gaming is really, really rife at the moment. Children love to play games, but if you think about it, a free game is never really free. There's always an added temptation to buy more power, to buy content, to pay for things, to pay for skins if you're on Fortnite, to buy content for your character in Roblox. Children are being encouraged to, in a game, either gamble or just spend money on a virtual environment, on a virtual thing. So I'm going to ask you some questions now. Let's say your son or your daughter wants to go out in the evening with some friends or go to the park for the day. And you're happy with them to go. But what are the three things that you'd want to know about your child going to the park with friends? Have a think. Have you thought about the things you'd want to know about when your children, your daughter or your son goes online? They're meeting their friends. They're going somewhere you don't know. You're not with them. What are the three things you might want to know in that situation? To be honest, it's the same thing. Just like online and offline, it, you'd want to know who your children are connecting with or who they were meeting in the park, wouldn't you? You'd want to know who they were going to be together with. The same off, online. Who are your children connecting with? You'd want to know if your children are going to the park, where they're going, which park, what part of it they're going to. Again, you'd want to know the same, but where they are online. Where are they going? And you'd want to know what they're doing. When you're in the park, what are you doing? Are you playing football? Just hanging around with your friends? Are you having a picnic? Again, you'd want to know what they're doing online. Are they playing a game? Are they chatting with somebody? Are they just researching? Are they looking at videos? Are they uploading content? Are they downloading content? So again, it's the who, the where, and the what questions that you would normally ask for an offline activity you would want to be asking when the children are online. This is a really sweet little video, very good for the younger child, which gives some advice about if things do go wrong, what can they do? And usually I ask a question with young children and I say, what's the really good decision this character makes in this video? I want you to watch and I want you to think of what's the really good decision that this child makes.
So what was a good decision? Of course, he went to ask an adult to help him. We always say, if your children have any problems online, they need to go to a trusted adult. But do they know who to go to? Have you had that conversation with children about coming to you or somebody else if things go wrong online? You need to have that conversation. Okay, I'm gonna ask you a few more questions. How do you know what the resources that your children are accessing and whether they are appropriate for their age? Do your children have the devices in their bedroom at night? Are they playing online? Are they not going to sleep until the last message is pinged on their social network, me, social media site? I know children are very tempted. They don't want to be the person left out. So are your children staying online when you don't know they're there? And what are they accessing? Is it appropriate for their age? Have you got smart speakers? And have they got, have you set your privacy up so that actually they can be careful and how they use and what the smart speakers return search content. There's a really useful resource from Internet Matters and the web address is here. Internetmatters.org forward slash resources forward slash smart hyphen speakers set up safely guide. I'm going to show it to you now and this will help you know how to set up your smart speakers safely. The site is fairly sen sen sensible. There are loads of more parental advice in Internet Matters, but this page here, and that is the URL, tells you how to keep your smart speakers safe, how to set up your parental controls, what the problems would be, and the benefits for using that resource. So something you might want to use with your children or have a look at at home. Check your tech. That's a nice thing to think about. Check your tech. How do you know what the content of the games and what they, how they play that your children are really into? How do you know what age range they're for? Have you even asked your children what the most popular game is at the moment? We all know Roblox. We all know Fortnite. But are there other games that your children are playing that probably we have no idea how they play because as we can see from the Ofcom result re research, our children were say, spending a lot of time gaming, probably even more now. But how can we be sure that what we're looking at is what they're looking at is age appropriate? Again, you need to ask your children, what are they playing? TikTok is very huge at the moment. Fortnite was very popular re until recently. I'm not sure if it still is. It might be overtaken by another game, which we have no idea about. So you need to talk to your children, find out what they are playing. Play the games yourself. If you're that interested, it'd be quite good. But actually that's timely. How can you play those games? I'm gonna show you a resource now that does all the hard work for you. Common Sense Media, a really useful website for parents, and for teachers. I'm going to show you how it works. The site reviews and looks at content, not just online. They are books, they are games, they are films. So it's not just about games. And you can even set it up for your particular age range. So content we've pushed to you that's relevant for your age range. But let's say we want to find out about something, a game that we know our children are playing, that we want to know, is it safe for them? Is it for their age range? So the easiest way to do is in the top box here, type in the resource that you are looking for. Let's do Roblox. So I'm going to type in Roblox just in the search box at the top. Roblox, there we go. And can you see they've even got some other resources, a, a guide for you. So they've made their own parents guide. We can click on the resource itself. So let's look, click on Roblox. It tells us the age that they reckon that this this game should be. This is their own rating. Okay, lots of online games won't have a particular PEGI rating. A game you have to buy over the counter will have a PEGI rating, which is a European guide on age appropriateness. But, but some online games won't have that. But they're saying this game should be for 13s. 
it tells you a little bit about the game. But then we have very, very quick and easy graphic here, which tells you, you know, is there any bad language? Are there positive messages? Is there much violence in the game? And if you're not sure if that's how appropriate that is, you can click on that tab and it'll tell you a little bit about what the violence is actually in that game. So actually you're going to get a lot of information just about something you might not be able to play. And then we get some parental um, need to know. So things that you need as a parent to be aware of in this game or this book or this film. I say it's not just for games, it's a really useful site. And then we've got some parents um, giving their feedback as well. Okay. So it's a really useful site. So it's commonsensemedia.org. And if you sign up to them, then every Friday you get an email with some up-to-date news, tips and reviews that they think are useful for your young children. Common Sense Media. There's also a very full parental blog in there where you can post up questions, ask people to ha give you some advice um, on different aspects of online world. So this one's about some examples of some questions and some posts about privacy and internet safety. So again, it's a way of sharing that data, that information. So why are we worried at school about things like gaming? Well, actually, in the real world, when we weren't in lockdown, we were very worried that because children were spending a lot of time online, that we were showing already impact on sleep and well-being and mental health. If your child is up at night playing, a, playing an online game, then sleep patterns are irregular. Your children might be on a social network where they want to get messaged with each other, like WhatsApp. And they're waiting, they're not sleeping because someone's pinging another message. So it's not, they're not getting the right amount of sleep. But also some of the behaviours we've seen in some of these games, particularly things like Fortnite, roll over into school. The children are playing the game in the playground. This fighting aggressive game, their behaviour is changing because they're acting out the game in the school environment. They might not even play Fortnite online, but they've heard of this game and they've heard there's fighting and they're playing the, the game in the playground. So you can you see the online world rolls into their real world. So what can you do? Again, talk about the amount of time that you're spending on the, they're spending on their devices. Talk about how they should stop playing before bedtime. Have a couple of hours screen free time. Get the brain to calm down. Discuss age appropriate games and why some games are not so appropriate to play. They're too old for that child. The other older players in there. Agree a family contract for being online. It might even be that you say, right, we're going to have d d device, free, device free meal time. So we're all going to put our devices away. Because you need to lead by example as well. If your phone is always pinging and you're checking it at all times, you're not leaving your phone alone that becomes the norm to them. Learn to manage the technology. Sharenting. This is all about consent. Children are finding that there is a lot of content being shared about them by you as parents, as you as adults, by family members posting up photographs. And actually, have you ever asked your child is it okay to post up that image of you? What information are you giving away? Have they got their school sweatshirt on? Are you taking that photograph of them on their first day at school, standing by their front door, door number, road number, road name? Think about what's in those pictures. What information are you giving away? Our children's digital footprint has been started even before some children are born. Let's find out some more about sharing and actually how our children feel about what's being shared about them online. These children were asked what they felt about what their parents shared about them online. Let's see what the children feel. When my mum takes pictures of me, she'll do it when I'm not looking and then she'll, won't ask and then she'll just put it on. <laughs> my first ever bath ticket. I uh, started to just collapse into it and my mum posted that on Facebook. Sometimes I wish that they weren't on social media because like, 
be like common embarrassing things on photos that I put on. They'll take one of me and my siblings and they'll put it on and it might be like a really bad picture of me or like a baby photo. More than one in three 10 to 12 year olds told Newsround they feel embarrassed, anxious or worried when their parents put pictures of them on social media sites. So do mums and dads need to think more about what they are sharing? My mum took a picture of me when I was sleeping, so I obviously didn't know until morning. And she said, look how many comments you've got on this photo, and I was just really angry at her. They just, like, post whatever they can find. They just don't really think about anything. They might post it just so I can laugh with their mates and think it's funny for her, but it may not be funny for you. You think about it, but they don't think about it. They can get bored for it. You don't want that happening to your child. But it's not just parents. More than one in four say they've been unhappy with a picture someone else has shared of them. And that's mainly because they didn't like the way they looked or that person didn't ask for their permission. And some say they've even had nasty comments. My friend posted a story of me and uh, I didn't like it. I asked him to take it down and then he took it down. Maybe the reason that you don't have a social media account is because you don't want anyone to see your photo and then people are sharing photos of you. And I just think it's not nice without the permission. When I see nasty comments, I, I feel really scared to use social media because I don't want to be targeted like them. And when my friend posted an embarrassing picture of me, it made me feel quite frustrated and angry. More than one in three of the kids we asked said seeing a picture of them they didn't like made them feel sad, anxious or nervous. What can you do about feeling that way? Approach the person who's put the picture online of them. Tell, ask them to take it down and tell them that they're worried about it. Speak to a parent or another trusted adult. Sometimes a parent can reassure the child that although the picture might be embarrassing at the moment, in a couple of days the picture will be forgotten about. But the good news is that mostly mums and dads do get it right. Nearly half of the 10 to 12 year olds said they were okay with what their parents posted and what they saw made them feel happy and proud. So what's your message for parents? It can affect the child's life further on and the child's life at school. If your child's friends will see whatever you comment on the photo. But maybe like when they post photos, like they could ask first, because like sometimes like most of the time my mum just posts them. But don't let parents have social media. So... Are you a sharent? Have a think. Have you posted things about your children without asking them? Or commented on friends' children? Or posted up photographs of friends or family without thinking about asking for their consent? So what can you do? You really need to get involved with your children's life online. Know what they're doing, know their favourites, their trends. Find out really important make sure that you have spoken about with your children about giving out personal information understand that there's a digital footprint set boundaries build your children's self-esteem we're not saying ban the internet we're saying make sure they're using it in a safe and secure way think about the messages your children are putting up your images ask them would you show that to your teacher or your grandparents if the answer is no why are you putting it up Again, make sure they know who to talk to if they feel uncomfortable. And talk to your children about what they should do if they come across something unpleasant. There are some child-friendly search engines out there, so rather than going to Google, children can use KidRex. Or other examples, child-friendly search engines. Your school will have the information about that. Use a browser tool so you can see the history of your children's online behaviour, but also be warned they soon learn to delete their history. You can install filtering, but please don't rely on it. Like everything, you need to be really careful. And find appropriate sites to visit. And the really importantly, don't overreact if there is an accident. If your child sees something they shouldn't or clicks on a link by mistake, don't overreact. If you go mad and overreact, your children won't tell you the next time because they'll be worried about your, what you say. So don't react. Keep calm. If you're unsure about how to set privacy controls on your devices and on your, your um, applications at home, there's a really useful site, again from Internet Matters, which will help you add privacy settings and parental controls. Let's have a look at it. Internet Matters. 
I have these links on the last page for you to keep a track of. So what happens in this page is it is a one-stop shop in a way, hopefully, um, where you can find information about keeping yourself safe and your children safe with your device at home. But let's scroll down because what you can actually do is you can actually ser search for something in particular. So if you have Netflix and you want to know how to set up the parental controls on Netflix, then all you need to do is look under the right category. So we're looking under entertainment, do the drop down, you'll find in there, there we go, Netflix parental controls guide. Can you see loads more there? YouTube, Google, everything's in there that we need to find out about and they will update this as and when is needed. So if I click on the Netflix parental controls guide, what's great about this is you can either have them email you a resource or you can download a PDF. If I click on download PDF, what's great about this, it's visual. It shows you exactly what to do. I'm quite a visual learner. I like to see what they're talking about. Don't give me a list of instructions, give me some pictures. And here we go. So can you see, it tells you exactly what to do. Go here from this part, when you've logged in, go to this bit, go to this bit, click on this. Can you see really nice, sensible advice on how you can set up some controls? And that's just for Netflix. If I come back, then you can see, oops, there's loads more content that you can access, resources you can find out about. Because we're not going to know how every game console works, I'm sure. Okay, so internet matters. So the reality is our children are early adopters. We get worried because we think, well, my four-year-old can program the Skybox. I don't know how to do that. So actually we do know our children catch on to technology really quickly. But be early adopters, unfortunately, they are the ones who probably are going to face the threats as well first because they're going to be finding things that we didn't even know exists. So again, it's about having those conversations with your children. So they know to come to you if things go wrong. Worryingly, from that Robert Winston report, parents were saying that their children's lockdown tech habits haven't come back down after the first lockdown and now we're in lockdown two really or lockdown three so you know actually our children are not going back to the behaviors they were before because we're getting reliant on technology bbc have got a fantastic resource called own it something that you could really use your children it's a fantastic website which is popular it's got celebrities in there that your children will know about people that we probably have never seen before i'm not sure who these people are but um it will give you some really lovely videos quick and snappy which will even for you to ex for them to explain some of the things that they're doing at home it's quite a nice thing to share with your children because actually they can involve you in this you can find out about the real online world and it's got different categories the basics is about the online world, different aspects of it, take control. We can find out how the children can actually organize their technology, keep themselves safe again. Again, there's loads of stuff in here. Personal is about giving away information, what the things, the things that you need and the things that perhaps you need to think about to keep your children safe and secure. You know, to need some answers. If you don't know the answer, have a look on BBC Own It first. They'll give you the safe and secure reference material. And don't panic, it's really useful. That's where you can go to report things that have gone wrong. If your children have an issue and they don't know who to go to, here we go. This will give you some ideas of the key resources and places that your children go to to report and get some help. So BBC Own It, really, really useful resource. More help for parents. The NSPCC have got a fantastic resource, a free phone number. I'll get that for you in a minute. And they can, you phone up and they will be able to give you some advice online. There's also these really useful websites, Think You Know and Childnet. On the last page here, I have got those links. So I'm gonna leave those up for you for a minute and then go back and get that free phone number for you. So while you're looking at that, page we'll come back and I'll get that free phone number for you so that free
free phone number for the NSPCC is 0808-800-5002. Advice on parental controls and privacy settings and where to go if things go wrong. I hope that has been useful for you as parents to help you with your children's online world and saying it's not that scary. You know what you're doing. Thanks for listening.